don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed to was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to re awfulize you after a sunny, virtuous Easter. You're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Yeah, re awfulize We just invented yeah. that word. Yeah, re we, we won't tell you for whom, but uh, <laughs> trust me, it's very appropriate. Uh, Easter Sunday, happy Easter, everyone. Happy and Easter. Uh, Easter Monday, actually. It was Easter Sunday yesterday, because that was Sunday, today's Monday. See, I've got it all going on. You're today. on fire! This I'm morning. on fire this Boom, morning. Look at you smashing them out of the park with <laughs> I that should still be solid off. intellect. I should still wits. be off. I know, talk about we it. We should both still be off. But, I, I uh, feel too happy and merry and full of joy to be sitting in this seat next to you, moaning about the world. Well, here we are. No, no, this is a, a day of a resurrection. Resurrection is today. And uh, let's uh, fire through today's big stories. First of all, uh, a big poll uh, on behalf of the MRP company has revealed that uh, the Tories, if they carry on like this, and it looks to me as if, if anything, they'll get worse, uh, but they will definitely carry, out, carry on on this trajectory, they'll end up with fewer than 100 seats at the next election. Okay, they'll, end up, they'll end up with 98, so while, the, uh, while Labour may end up with nearly 500. Labour could end up with a uh, literally... 468 seats, giving them a 286 majority. It's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous, wild. isn't it? It's ridiculous. We've basically become the Communist Party of China at that point, don't yeah. we? Yeah. A <laughs> one party state of yeah. mad leftists. Great, can't wait. Um, but you know, the conser you can tell because the Conservatives all over the weekend have been out in force in the newspapers, online with their attacking this direction, attacking that direction. Their backs against the ropes. But the problem is, I think now, Whatever comes out of the Conservative Party mouth is just falling on deaf ears because people are like, well, you know, you've had a good 15 years to deliver on single promises. You've not done any of it. You really messed up the country. We don't trust you. We don't like you. The sooner you're put out to grass, the better. Exactly right. And uh, the Reform UK, uh, they're going to damage the Tories all over the country. And they believe that uh, as a direct result of uh, Reform UK's campaign, the Tories will le lose at least 50 seats. Uh, directly, and then in other seats, uh, Reform UK will split the vote and Labour will get in by default. So all in all, it's looking like a massive landslide for Labour. Uh, ju just out of default, they're not actually doing anything. They're not actually saying anything that's any good at all. <laughs> they're just being there as an alternative yeah. to this clapped out, hopeless Tory party uh, that forgot how to be a Tory party many years ago. Well, this is the interesting thing. You know, the Conservative Party are going to come out and say about Reform UK, you're the ones who are going to put Labour in power, even if Reform UK didn't exist, Labour are going to be in power because that's how hated the Conservative Party now are. But also, you know, be careful what you wish for because back in 2019, the Brexit Party, the previous iteration of Reform UK, stood down in seats across the country, giving Boris Johnson that 80-seat majority with the express condition that, look, here you go, this has prevented a Labour government, get on and be Conservative. Well, they didn't do it. Yeah. In fact, actually, the Conservative Party should have negotiated back then and stood down in some seats themselves and actually formed some form of coalition, but instead they greedily demanded the lot of it by putting blackmail on the party and pressurising people and bullying candidates, publishing names and contact details in national newspapers. And then after their campaign of intimidation, they got what they wanted and they've completely failed. So do you know what? Not again. Yeah. If you'd been better and more mature and more sensible last time round, then there could be a deal to strike. But I don't think Richard Tice will be in the mood for doing that at all. In fact, I think he and Farage will rub their hands together with glee at the destruction of the Conservative Party and say, 
Yabu sucks. Yeah, and a few big wigs are facing losing their seats, including the Prime Minister, <laughs> who could lose Richmond and North Allerton. That's, his That's seat. A, such Up a safe there in Yorkshire. seat. Uh, also, uh, um, uh, several other uh, cabinet ministers, including the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunter, he's facing losing his seat at Godalming and Ash to the Liberal Democrats. And as Lord Frost, the Tory guru, said, uh, well, he's implying... For God's sake, call the election now, Rishi, because he's saying this is a desperate situation. The polling is getting worse over time, not better. So you might as well cut your losses now. Uh, meanwhile, uh, oh, this has got my the nerves. Tories Sorry. are backing a proposal to publish. This is what you were talking yeah. about. So we've got all these migrants coming in. It's quite clear that a significant number of migrants who we're allowed to stay or we're allowed to stick around while they're uh, asylum applications are being processed, are committing serious crimes, particularly sexual crimes. You've been calling, Alex, mm -hmm. for these statistics to be published. Uh, and now senior Tories are backing your call. Uh, let's know, these people we let into the country, these people we yeah. let stay here, let's see what crimes they're committing. Well, this is the thing. A lot of European nations do this. They look at uh, the crimes committed by a nationality per capita, and the rates across Western Europe are very, very eye-opening, particularly, as Kev says, in terms of sexual crimes, uh, because we're importing people from vastly different countries who's, who've got horrible, brutal, medieval attitudes towards women. Uh, they're, of course, as well, let's not forget that all these these people flocking onto our beaches are not poor, sad migrants. Some of them will be proper refugees. A lot of them are connected to criminal networks that have come here expressly for the purpose of committing crime. But we, not only do we not publish this, we only publish the nationality of victims. Um, we don't, we're not even going to do a census anymore. Oh, forget that. Who cares what's going on with our country? We don't need that research anymore. It's utterly disgusting. The problem I've got with this is it's all very well, isn't it? The Conservative Party, if you remember, saying to the Telegraph, which have been pretty critical of the Conservative Party, oh, we've come up with this fantastic idea. We saw Nigel Farage and Alex Phillips saying this on Twitter, so we're going to tell you that we're going to do it. The point is, you haven't. You could have been doing it. You could have been doing it for 15 years. You should have been doing it for 15 years. You should have come up with this idea yourself because it's not exactly rocket science, is it? Let's find out who's committing crime in the country. Oh, I know. Let's protect women instead of sacrificing them at the altar of mass immigration and political correctness. You should have been doing it. So don't go running your mouth off in the telegraph pretending you're going to do it when we all know it's word soup nonsense, lies and gaslighting like yeah, the rest uh, of your time way, in they, power. They always do these statistics. Six, they just decided not to tell us. Deliberately suppressed so this them. is about transparency. Mm -hmm. We need to know. These people were letting into the country. What crimes are they committed? Yep. Tell us. Uh, Tories are now saying they might. Uh, they should have oh, done it before. You're so right. Red, all I they've mean, done is kept, all they've done so far is kept us in the dark about yep. this, Still which is profoundly wrong. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we're going to go. We've gone over a five thousand migrants arriving in the UK, crossing the Channel illegally yeah. so far this year. This is the highest number of all time. Uh, so this is getting worse and worse yeah. and worse. We keep saying, turn the damn boats back, Rishi. This is going to lose you the election alone. This is yeah. an absolute stain on your reputation. You said you were going to stop the boats. They are coming over here in higher numbers than ever before. This situation is getting worse and yeah. worse and worse. Why don't you stop them? They're called borders. They're enshrined in international law. That thing you like so much, international law. Remember that, Sunak? Well, guess what? Our territorial waters are ours to protect, according to international law. So why aren't you doing it? Because he's useless. useless. Now, let's move on. And by the way, he's doomed to lose the next election by an absolute <laughs> so land doomed. sign. If he called the election tomorrow, the damage would be less than if he calls it more likely yeah, remember, in uh, October. Spare a thought for the Conservative Party because they can't help the mess that they inherited from the Conservative Party. Who couldn't help yeah. the mess they inherited from yeah, the Conservative yeah. Party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so uh, it may be that uh, the Conservative Party is reaching the end of the road. We don't really need them anymore <laughs> uh, because uh, they've spent the last 20, 30 years trying to be a bit like Labour, Labour light. We're not the nasty party, said Theresa May, and thereby ruined the entire party. Right, on the front page of both the Times Shocking, and the Mail today, over 250 A&E patients, accident and emergency patients, die each week due to long NHS waiting times. 250 people a week yep. are dying because of the uh, long NHS waiting lines that, guess what, Richie, 
Sunak said he was going to cut back, but he hasn't. They've got worse. Yeah, they've got a lot worse. I mean, yes, there have been doctor strikes and all the rest of it. And remember, this is just A&E patients. We're not talking about people who failed to get their cancers mm. diagnosed, who failed to get heart disease diagnosed, all the other failings across the NHS of people who are dying unnecessarily early because they're not getting basic medical treatment. And I remember during COVID, some of us were saying, do you know what? The outcomes of COVID policy are going to end up being worse than COVID itself when you look at death rates. I think we're pretty much topping that now, aren't we? 250 people dying in A&E alone every single week. That is almost COVID at its worst, basically. So well done. Slow clap to that government policy, which is now murdering people who pay their taxes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. When those doctors go out and strike... Uh, more people die. Uh, even, yeah, so even clap to them people. as well. But the strikers are killing people, the NHS waiting lines are killing people, and basically Tory hopelessness is killing people. So yep. that's good, isn't it? Uh, meanwhile, uh, talking so about killing you people. Uh, were very intrigued as to of who course. paid for who Abdul paid for Azidi's Muslim burial. Uh, of course, uh, Abdul Azidi, a well-known Christian, he converted to Christianity. Well known. Uh, to, and therefore, despite committing sex crimes, two of them, uh, he was allowed to stay because he converted to Christianity, uh, told all his mates he was still a good Muslim. There he is getting tra uh, trans... Uh, um, getting... Uh, Transmogrified. Yeah, uh, changed <laughs> into a Christian, except he wasn't. Uh, guess what? He had a full Muslim burial. You asked... Who paid for that? Uh, guess what? It was the Muslim Burial Fund who organised a crowdfunding, uh, 6,000 quid, to lay Azidi to rest, uh, not as a Christian but as a Muslim, mm. uh, and they lied about who he was. Yeah, they, they basically... They didn't say it was right, him. Exactly. They said that um, the appeal for Abdul Wahid was the yeah. fake name they gave him. Please give our brother a dignified Islamic burial. He died tragically in suspicious circumstances with no one to claim his body. Well, it wasn't that suspicious. He had taken out his eye by lobbing alkaline chemicals over somebody. It wasn't a tragic death. It was well-deserved. And the people <laughs> who claimed his body were called the police yeah. river divers. Yeah. And, and he should have not... been left in there with the fishes I, to I, rot. Is, is it not? That, isn't that false pretenses? I mean, the, 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 yeah. they're raising money on false right. pretenses. Nice they're saying it's Abu Wahid. It's not. It's the alkaline vile chemical attacker who nearly blinded a woman, Abdul Azidi. Would you give your money to that? To you that person for uh, his uh, Muslim uh, burial? I don't think so. Yeah. So I think questions need to be asked. Yeah. You can't crowdfund on <laughs> right. uh, false pretenses. So we need to look Ridiculous. into that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I guess still on the same tack, uh, the Home Secretary, uh, uh, James Cleverly, has warned churches not to allow asylum seekers to exploit the system by converting to Christianity. Right. So I get this, right, on, a, on some level. But at the same time, you are the Home Secretary, you run the Home Office. Why don't you say to the Home Office, do you know what? Conversion to Christianity is not a reason yeah, exactly. to stay in this exactly. country. Exactly, well said. Let well churches said. do churchy things. Their job is to get people interested in Jesus. I go to church. I love a bit of people converting to Christ. That's great. But you get the Home Office functioning properly. Problem with this government, every time they constantly point the finger at everyone, at lefty lawyers, in International law, WHO, ECHR. No, you. You're the government. You. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well said. Now, uh, King Charles, uh, as we know, is battling cancer. We don't know what type. Uh, and uh, frankly, he's been looking a bit rough lately, but he's going <laughs> through ke chemotherapy. Why wouldn't he? It's very harrowing, very physically taxing. Uh, but yesterday, he made us a, a big step towards a full recovery when uh, he attended the Easter service, I think at St George's Chapel in Windsor with the other royals, but he sat away from everyone else because obviously uh, he's in a condition where he could uh, catch infections very easily. So he sat away, but it was a step back into full public life from Charles Yay. and very encouraging. Yeah, as they say on Easter Sunday, he has risen. He has risen indeed. Nice to see our king up and active. And apparently he looks like he was really enjoying himself and uh, rather reluctant to go into church, wanted to glad hand, but of course he couldn't. So we hope he continues to make a strong and full recovery. Who has risen? Well, Jesus oh, has risen. Oh, he did wow. that yesterday. So it's cap H, yeah. He has risen. Cap yeah, he. he. Capital H. But uh, also yeah. HR. Uh, HR, what? HRH. Human resources. HR, human resources has risen. HRH, his <laughs> highness, has also risen. Yeah, yeah. The bed has the risen. People, yeah. The hot tick buns have risen. Yeah, yeah. Hot cross talk later. This, this, this uh, yeah, uh, I, I need to get uh, persuaded that this is all 
not mumbo jumbo, but there we are. He won't. Uh, <laughs> no, I won't. It's never going to... Reauthorisation. It's a bit late now, Alex. Uh, but respect to your faith. Respect oh, to your faith and all oh. people who have faith. Uh, I'm afraid it, it sort of passes me by. Uh, now, let's talk about swastikas. Uh, now, they are, of course, offensive. They were the, the insignia of the Nazis, who were incredibly anti-Semitic. In fact, killed uh, six million Jews in the Holocaust. Yeah. Uh, a uh, Met police officer has been telling a Jewish woman at... A, uh, a demonstration at the weekend uh, that a swastika that she'd seen as had reported as anti-Semitic uh, was not necessarily uh, anti-Semitic <laughs> if it was taken in context. Uh, I think the Met Office is probably a bit offline oh. here, but should we have a look at uh, uh, modern policing in Britain? Take it away, Copper. In what context is a swastika not anti-Semitic and destructive of public order? That was my question. I don't have an in-depth knowledge of scientific symbols. Right? I know the swastika was used by the Nazi party during uh, their inception and the period of them being in power in Germany in the 1930s. I am aware of that. I just can't believe this conversation is actually um, happening. Um, so what, what, what exactly are you confused about? What, what I'm confused you, is how you don't, in what context you know, the swastika is not anti-Semitic. This is what I want to know. Because again... Well, I suppose, to some, I don't know uh, how... Everybody would feel about that song. Hold on. So you saying we've got to take that thing in context, right? If you've got uh, swastika, as they call it in Hinduism, which is this way up, then it is a peace sign, actually. That is what the tika of swast means. If it's this way up during a pro-Palestine march, and I'm pretty sure that is about killing Jewish people. There you go. Yeah. There's your context, sunshine. So when it's about killing Jewish people, do you not then call it swastika? Well, then it, call it, it, comes, it is a Sanskrit word, swastika. So what do you call it when it's sign. used uh, by the well, that's like, it's a, Is it swastika. a swastika then? Swastika. No, it's swastika, isn't it? Swastika. Swastika. Yeah. So we're talking about a swastika, not a swastika. Well, no, swastika. Uh, so, it's no, no, but a swastika, but... this is about a swastika, isn't it? Well, it is. Which no, is anti anti. -Jewish. Put it in the context of a pro-Palestine uh, march and it looks the same as the Nazi one, then you've got your blooming context, yeah, haven't you? that's why I wanted to talk about the Hindu swastika. That's what we're here for today. I like giving some information context every now and then. Right. Uh, let's talk about, uh, well, it's it's not, of course, Easter, is it today? No, no. Not according to the Labour not. Party. I hope no. you've got a picture of this. What it is, according to the Labour Party, is Trans Visibility Day. There it is. They put this out on Twitter saying, Today, on Trans Day of Visibility and always, Labour stands with trans people. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people on social media <laughs> responded, It's not Trans Day of vi Visibility. It's Easter Monday. Also, what even does that mean? Are trans people normally invisible? Yeah. I'm pretty sure all we ever hear about is trans people and how badly they're being treated and how they're being attacked because they're trans people. If you're attacking someone because they're a trans person, then you can see that they're a trans person and they're not invisible. So what? why do they need a day of visibility? What's that all about? Yeah. They've got ma like mad invisibility cloaks as part of their like wardrobe or something can disappear into the background. I'll tell you what, Labour, why don't you just put a uh, today is Easter Sunday. This is when this came out yesterday. Have a lovely Easter, everyone. And I guess if you want to stick on the end, enjoy Ramadan and all that. Why don't you do that? Why are you saying today is Trans Day of Visibility? How many people wake up on Easter Sunday and go, ooh, it's Trans Visibility Day? Yeah, About yeah. About two uh, ridiculous. That's Labour. Also, That's it's a... probably core voter day of invisibility because yeah. the vast majority of us in this country feel totally ignored, let down and left behind. So there you go. Exactly. Every day is mass majority invisibility day. Yeah, well said. Now, uh, this may explain well, the next story we're going to cover now, why 23,000 people have quit the Labour Party. Uh, this is, is actually, I'd like to say it's because they were fed up about this nonsense about Trans Visibility Day. Probably are, say, in part. What does that mean? What, as opposed to Trans Invisibility Day? <laughs> Ridiculous. So, uh, uh, 23,000 have quit the party uh, amid escalating rows over Starmer refusing to call for a Gaza ceasefire and, of course, his U-turn on pledging to invest £28 billion a year into green energy schemes. Oh, he's not love doing it. that anymore and he's not calling for a ceasefire. Therefore, 23,000 Labour Party faithful have quit and they're worried about it. I absolutely love this because there you are, the Labour Party who pretend to be a right-wing normal party party of the people, we love the red wall and all that, we represent you, mass majority invisibility day. 
Well, all the mad lefties with their short fringes and blue hair and their placards and their odd neo-religions say, no, you're not serving us anymore. You don't represent us. What about the world? It's on fire. What about trans people? They're invisible. Well, oh, wow. indeed, they're invisible. They're totally invisible. So, they're Scott, invisible. so Labour uh, supposed to be the, this landslide victory coming. Labour of gut, the party of government. Uh, I think it's only just well, they're, they're apart people. For them. They're hemorrhaging members. Twenty three thousand have quit uh, over the leadership of Keir yeah, Starmer. Good reason for a soon act to go long, actually, because I think the Labour Party disintegration hasn't really started in earnest yet. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to watching that one. Get out the popcorn, yeah. Kev. Yeah, the yeah. reawfulization of Labour. Yeah, the reawfulization of Labour. The de of the Tories. They're all going to hell in a handcart. And these two parties, they believe they have the divine right to divide up rulership yeah. of the country. Right, we'll do it for a few years, then you then can you do can it. Go, it really looks to me difference. like oh, that, uh, that duopoly, that uh, tyrannical yeah. duopoly is coming to an end. Tyrannical duopoly, I like that. There you go. Uh, nice. Now, uh, let's uh, talk about Scotland. This is a duopoly of Scotland. Scotland's new hate crime laws are terrifying. Hums are useless. Uh, is bringing in a sort of uh, fascist-like regime where people are going to be terrified what they say in their own houses, uh, at their own homes, at their own dinner tables. Mm -hmm. If anyone reports someone for saying, I think you're guilty of a hate crime, and the police say, why do you think that person's guilty of a hate crime? They say, because I think that. So then they'll go, yep. all right, well, that is a hate there crime. You go. So this Hate Crime and Public Order Act, which comes into being Fascism. today... Let's call it by its in, name. Uh, it's like living in North Korea. Yeah. You've got to be careful what this, you say yeah. in the public in your own home, yep. there it is, hate hurts. Hate hurts a decent country, I'll tell you. I mean, it's seven years maximum sentence, seven years in the slammer, if you say hurty words in Scotland now. <laughs> and part of that is all about this sort of uh, gender identity thing. So if you turn around and go, Sorry, you've you got, you got a, a willy down there. You're not a woman. No, 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 willy, not woman. Then you could end up in prison. Uh, but there's no similar thing covering the protection of women and misogyny. So all of the people with willies in their fox, the fox, the jocks in the fox, can be like, oh, you turf. Oh, yeah, nice, well done. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. And they go. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, and then the women, like, oh, then, no, you know, then but, you go in the slammer, not him. But what are the, cop, the top cops in there? Uh... Uh, Scotland are also saying that this will undermine oh, trust yeah. in the police because everybody uh, who's got a beef or lots of people who've got a beef against someone else, this is a charter to get your enemies into yes, trouble. Yeah. It's they not about what they've done, it's about every what you single think crime. they've done. And we know what they're like, all those mad activists. They're the first ones to see hurty words on Twitter and report it to the police. So the police are basically not going to be doing anything else in Scotland apart from investigating hurty words. So, yeah, good luck. Yeah. Scotland. Waste of time. It's about to become an Waste of time. It's North Korean. It's ridiculous. Disgusting. That place, Scotland. Uh, I mean, it could come back to us. It lovely, it's a great it? country, great people. Yeah. It's been ruled, Beautiful landscape. It's been ruled by... That idiot little man. despots yeah. for too long. They're called the Scottish National Party and they're finished too, talking of parties that have had their day. The SNP, finished. Uh, never got what it wanted uh, and <laughs> never will. Uh, now, uh, let's talk this about uh, 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 antidepressants. This is ridiculous. This is gross. More than five, uh, nearly 500,000 antidepressant prescriptions are being handed out to lost and loaded kids every year. This is because they can't get to see psychotherapists or psychiatrists. So they just give them pills. They just medicate them. Uh, and uh, uh, so many of these kids who are getting them, uh, uh, 300, th nearly 4,000 of these prescriptions were handed out to children under the age of 10. We're giving this depressants to really kids who are under bad. the age of 10. We, are this you is serious? going to be a massive medical scandal in the future. We don't know the long term effects whacking these kids of all these like loony pills is going to do. It's so dangerous. It's so wrong. You shouldn't be medicalizing kids who are a bit going through a tough time. Why don't you just help rebuild family structures and make sure communities come together? And I don't know, unplug social media and stuff mm -hmm. like that. No, this is dreadful. I'm pretty sure that come 2035, when Kevin and I are sitting in the corner of some dusty room, <laughs> re awfulizing once again, <laughs> uh, we're going to be looking at this and all the legal cases brought against governments and doctors for doing this sort of nonsense. I, I, don't, have to be, I don't have to be re awfulized. I shall maintain my awfulization, my <laughs> rates, current rates of awfulization. Uh, which is a good word we've <laughs> Awfulization, re awfulization. De awfulization. De awfulization. Yeah. De -awfulization. Yeah. Uh, let's quickly talk about this gangster gourmet. Uh, 
uh, that we'll talk about a bit later. His name is uh, Christy Kinahan, and he's one of the most, he's an Irish guy, one of the most wanted men in the world because he's the head of a massive international oh, he's quite, drugs he's uh, cartel. Looking, isn't he? Tra drugs cartel. He's from Dublin. He's a billionaire. Uh, they've been chasing him. He's been on the run since 2019. Uh, apparently, he lives in Dubai, but for some reason, they can't find him. None of the international. <laughs> Police forces can lay a hand on him. But it turns out that throughout this turbulent five years from him, since 2019, he's been traveling around the world, going to hotels and restaurants and doing reviews on TripAdvisor. <laughs> So if you want to find out oh. where Christy Kinahan has been, just have a look at Trip, TripAdvisor. I mean, Why does the police work this out? He's a pretty potent man, isn't he? He's apparently worked alongside cocaine gangs in South America, yeah. jihadists, uh, even intelligence services yeah. in Russia and Iran. So we know who's uh, helping him yeah. fight, don't we? But he doesn't look like your average drug dealer does. I don't know what I feel like the average big drug warlord would look like, but he well, doesn't He's a Dublin like guy. It. The Irish are very yeah. big on drug dealing. Uh, uh, Do they love a bit of that? Very good at it. They love a bit of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's one of the world's most wanted in the Americans, one of everybody wants him. He has literally made billions of pounds uh, flogging drugs around the world, uh, but along the way has been leaving reviews of restaurants and <laughs> hotels very handily. That's Thank you, Christy. Uh, now, uh, lastly, uh, I, I think this might get you a bit worked up. Uh, the National Trust, people go to these stately homes and they have, obviously on a Sunday or something, they have uh, scones and uh, tea. Is it scones? I don't know. Scones I and jam. Know. I can't anyway. with scones, but Everyone tells me it's scones, but well, I say right. I, I, I say scone, I think. Oh, good, you're fellow Anyway, I'm a sconer. Uh, <laughs> always have been a sconer. Uh, <laughs> National Trust uh, uh, basically have oh. secretly been serving everyone uh, vegan uh, scones uh, with no butter, <laughs> no dairy products in them, and uh, could explain why people going to the 280 cafes at various National Trust establishments have come out saying those scones taste like dry biscuits. Because they are! Yeah. <laughs> I suppose so, yeah. You're not going to put butter in your scone. You are making just a pile of filth that tastes awful. At least apparently, you know, they, they are... Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, well, well, I mean, they've got no, to... I can't they think about them. Look, I can't. I they should can't come clean. About them. If I want to buy a vegan scone, tell me. Don't get me if started on a halal meat. If I don't want to buy meat. vegan scones, I should know. Don't get Can't me started just... on secret halal meat everywhere. That one really Well, all right, yeah. That, that's a big one of my wife's uh, as well. But yeah. Well, um, perhaps we will revisit that this afternoon. But sadly, Alex, for the time being, we have come to the end of this show. Thank you for tuning in. Join us for our other show at one o'clock. Hot Cross Talk Buns. Hot Cross Talk Buns. Up next is... It's not Julie Hartley Brewer, is it? We don't know. Jay, Jay, Let's talk it's about Deanna it. Davidson. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Plymouth City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. But you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> there was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue